Hello Geometry Kids, uh, this is 10.3 Using Chords and Big Ideas Math. And hopefully I'm staying ahead of you. some of you here as we're working through this. So the essential question for this one, what are two ways to determine when a chord is, the, is a diameter of a circle? So there will be several properties here. If you can remember those and check back to those, this should go okay with you, for you hopefully. Uh, remember that a chord is just a segment that connects two points on a circle. So it can be any segment around here. Uh, if it, remember, if it goes through the center, then that is called a diameter. So several properties that we're going to look at relating to how we can know based off the distances mostly, whether it's going through the center. Okay. Uh, that was page 288. Um, so the vocabulary, the chord, remember a chord is just a segment connecting two points on a circle. An arc is the distance around a circle and we can measure arcs. So Arcs are going to come back into play, also central angles are going to come back into play. So remember when we have a central angle, the vertex is at the center, and if this is 110 degrees, this angle right here, the central angle, if this is A and B, then the measure of arc AB would be 110 degrees. So the measure of the arc is represented by the measure of the central angle that intercepts the arc. That's referred to as intercepting the arc because that's where it stops. And diameter. Okay, so the first one. Congruent corresponding chords theorem. Okay, it says if you have two minor arcs that are congruent, then the corresponding chords are congruent. So that works both ways. So that's saying, okay, I have two chords, one, two, and if I know this arc right here, measures, uh, what do we say, let's say it measures 100 degrees, okay? So if I know that's 100 degrees and this is 100 degrees right along here, then the chords are congruent, which in this case means they are the same length. So if that happens, then we know this is that. So if these are congruent, then these are congruent. Okay. That works both ways because it's an if and only if statement. So if you start with congruent chords, so if they're congruent, then the arcs are equal measures. That's what the if and only if means. So you can start with congruent chords, then you'll have congruent arcs, or you can start with congruent arcs, then you're going to have congruent chords. Okay, so that's congruent corresponding chords theorem. Woohoo. Um, perpendic perpendicular, page 291, perpendicular chord bisector theorem. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular, notice the if, then the then. It's not an if and only if. If the diameter of a chord is perpendicular, that means the 90 degrees, to a chord. So we have a diameter, there's a center, and it's perpendicular to the chord. Then the diameter bisects, remember that is makes two equal parts, the chord and its arc. Two things, chord and its arc. So since this is perpendicular, if it's perpendicular, that means HD is congruent to HF, this is congruent to this, and GD is congruent to GF. Okay. So when you have something like this, there's the center. You know that's a 90 degree angle. Let's make that diameter through there. So if this is 4, this has to be 4. And if this is 45 degrees right there, you see that? Sorry. If that's 4, that's 4. Two equal sides. If this is 45 degrees, then this has to be 45 degrees. Okay? So you get that 90 degree angle between a diameter and a chord, 
you have a lot of equal parts that are happening on happening there. Uh, perpendicular chord bisector theorem. If one chord of a circle is perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. Okay, so this is kind of the and, and only if part of 10.7. If one chord, now you don't know it's the center, that's a different thing here. If this is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then SQ or QS is a diameter. So S Q must be a diameter since it is a perpendicular bisector of TR. Uh, equidistant chords theorem, this one's finally a little bit different. In the same circle or in congruent circles, congruent, notice you can have the same radius, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Okay, So AB would be congruent to CD only if, let's say, that's two inches and that's two inches. So the distance from the center has to be the same length. Now remember, if that's true, then CD is congruent to AB, and that also means AB, arc AB, is congruent to arc CD. So the distance around here, that is going back to the first theorem we had, congruent corresponding chords theorem. So if you have chords that are the same unit away from the center, they're the same length, and then the arcs are going to be the same measure, you're going to get the same central angle from that. Okay. So not a lot of practice here. Um, we'll look at the assignment as well. Uh, exercise one through four. Find the measure of the arc or chord in circle Q. Circle Q. Okay, so the measure of arc WX. WX right through here. Okay, so the measure of an arc you have to look for the measure of the central angle. So this is the central angle that intercepts that. We want to know this measurement right here. Okay, so I'm looking for anything that has a degree measure and this is the only one I have. So is there a re relationship between these two angles right here and right here? So 42 is a vertical angle, it's an opposite angle to this one up here. So this angle here has to be 42 degrees as well. And so if the central angle is 42, then the measure of the arc has to be 42 degrees. Okay, y to z, the length from y to z. So y is here, z is here. So these are all part of the same circle. So if this is 42 and this is 42, if this is 3.6, then this one down here has to be 3.6 because it is the first theorem. If you have intercepting arcs the same measure, then the chords have to be the same. So YZ has to be 3.6. Matches this one right up here. WZ. WZ is the segment that goes from here to here. Okay. So you, how I see this one, they want the length. Okay, this one's 9.2 on this side. These are going to be congruent because W Y X Y is going to be the same as W Z. Okay, because this angle in here is going to equal this angle on the other side. So W Z has to act match X Y. So W Z equals X Y, which is 9.2. Measure of arc X Y. Okay. If you go X, Y, Z, that's 180 degrees because that's the diameter. Okay, so there's 180 degrees. We know this one is 42. So if I take 180 minus 42, I get 138 degrees. That would be the measure of this one right here. That'd be this angle in here as well, 138 degrees. Okay, question five, find the value of X. So we know we have a diameter because there's a center that's labeled and it's a perpendicular to this chord right here. So if it's perpendicular to the chord, 
we know that's going to bisect it. Okay? And the diameter bisects the cord and its arcs. So if it bisects it, these two sides are equal, so we want to set the two things equal to each other. 2x minus 4.1 equals x minus 0 0.5. Solve for x. So x, that cancels, that cancels, equals negative 5 plus 4.1 would be 3.6. So x would there, in that case, be 3.6 because those have to be equal. Same sort of setup, 3x minus 5 and 2x plus 1, perpendicular diameter bisecting a chord. So 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 1. Solve that, so x equals 6. Okay, find the radius of the circle. These might be some of the trickier ones because there are going to be a couple steps here. The first thing is we have a center, and you notice we have equidistant from the center. So since they're equidistant, we know AC has to equal FD. These two sides have to equal to each other. It's equidistant and it's perpendicular. So 5x minus 2 has to equal Sorry. 5x minus 2 has to equal 3x plus 2. So 2x minus the 3x over equals 4, so x equals 2. So x equals 2, we're going to come plug it back up in here. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. So this segment right here is 8. Now the radius, you want to draw the radius from the center to one of these points on the outside. So from P to F or P to D, P to C or P to A, that's the radius. So I'm going to draw a radius right here. That's R. And this is 3. This is 4 because we know it bisects it, so the whole thing was 8. So this part is 4. And we have, you want to create a right triangle. Okay, so that's why you can draw it anywhere. Some of these from the computer, you want to draw that. Draw that out on your paper, okay, so you can label some of this. So P to F, I have a right triangle. There's a 3, there's a 4. If you remember your Pythagorean triples, 3 and 4, the hypotenuse must be 5. So the radius is 5. If you need help with that, it's going to be R is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, Pythagorean theorem. So that's 9 plus 16 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So the radius would be 5. 3, 4, 5 when our Pythagorean triples. A to similar, it just starts in a different direction, different place. So it tells you these chords are congruent. So if they're congruent and you have a 90 degree angle, then these distances here have to be the same as well. So 4x minus 5 equals x plus 4. Uh, minus the x, add the 5, so 3x equals 9, so x equals 3. Okay, plug that in. X is 3, so this is going to be 7 right here. You can check 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 5 is 7. So this segment here is 7. This segment here is going to be 10, and we need this radius right there. Again, you can draw it anywhere. Draw it up there, right there, right there. It's all going to be the same. So we need this radius. That's 7, that's 10. Not a Pythagorean triple. So r is the square root of 7 squared plus 10 squared. So r is the square root of 49 plus 100. That would be 149. Uh, as far as the type of answers they want, check that. Everything will work out to a whole number or they'll ask it to the nearest tenth of an inch. So we can go ahead and just find the decimal for that, about 12.2. Okay, so that's the examples in the student journal. Um, I'll bring this over, let's look at anything specific. There's some terminology, there's some symbols that don't necessarily load on here all the time. Uh, when you see this O dot, 
uh, that is supposed to be the symbol for circle C. So O dot stand that's an O with a dot in the middle, which is a circle, the symbol for a circle. Okay, so find the measure of the red arc. Uh, this is going just over your properties. All these O dots are just circle C, circle C. Okay, notice these are congruent circles. They have the same radius. Um, here's your perpendicular, diameter perpendicular parts. Again, setting those equal to each other. Problem solving. Um, what you have here are two parallel lines that are the same length. Okay. So they want to find the middle of that. So think of these as two chords and think of the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. And if you would draw a something that perpendicular bisector to that, okay, that would help find the center and then find the midpoint of it. So see which of you actually listened this far in the video because I just gave you a couple answers there. Um, find the radius. These are the two questions. Find the radius. Okay, very similar to the last two examples we did. Uh, a couple word problems down here. Interior angle missing. Remember the theorem 180 times n minus 2. So you have a quadrilateral. Remember the sum of the angles of quadrilateral. What do those have to add up to? And you have a pentagon. So the sum of the measures of a, in, of a pentagon. What do they have to add up to? So I did get a couple review questions in this one. So let me know if you have any questions or clarify anything for you. Um, good luck, and I'll actually see you later today in a little bit. Stay bluebird strong.